Hey guys, Ajax22 uh, here with the Steampunk Projects and I wanted to show you guys where we're at. Uh, mostly been just scrounging parts, haven't had a chance to do any machine work or you know really dive into these. 90% of this is going to be scrounging and coming up with parts and you know then doing a little bit of fab work. Well, may maybe more than a little bit of fab work. <laughs> Probably quite a bit of fab work. But uh, can't really do that until we get all the parts sourced. Um, so let me make the rounds. I came up with a bunch of these base plates for magazines. Uh, they're brass drop free weights. You drill and tap them in. Um, got a whole bunch of uh, really cool parts uh, donated actually by some viewers. Uh, you know, special thanks to Tony, uh, Randy, um, man, so many guys. Uh, you all know who you are. Thank you. This uh, really coming together um, largely because of the help I'm getting from you guys. Um, anyway, uh, this one's pretty uh, pretty basic, uh, and I'm just going to circle around the table and show you this one. I've got an interesting idea. Um, haven't done a sketch for this this gun yet. But I got this Surefire uh, under trigger rail, and I think I can actually turn it into a uh, the a dust cover, a floating dust cover. Grind it actually uh, to get rid of the rail, and then turn it into sort of an aircraft strut profiled underpiece. Um, maybe add a loop to it so that it can hang off the retained. Uh, recoil uh, spring assembly. Um, the really interesting thing is this, because this take this pin here, even if I made a custom fabricated my own uh, under piece for this out of brass or something, this takedown pin will absolutely work perfectly to hold it on. Uh, that's just how these surefires work. Um, and we can modify it and weld to it. It's got a lot of nice thick metal on it. Uh, I'm really digging this pin. The the Surefire thing may or may not be useful. Uh, we'll see what I can what I can do with it. Um, it's going to require uh, quite a bit of hand hand work, but the uh, the pin's awesome. Uh, another drop free weight. Another one of these extended safeties. Some of these I'm probably going to grind completely off and use as uh, delete uh, pins, basically for the safety. Um, haven't really fully decided exactly how I'm going to do that. Um, you know, a lot of little parts still needed for this one, but I don't have a full idea of what I'm going to do with it yet, so it's not really an issue. This one's probably the most complete that I've got here sitting here so far. Um, most of the little internals for the frame, a couple for the slide. Um, as you can see, got the mags with, uh, these ones have different drop free weights, but I also have a, a drop free weight for this one. Uh, i got a bunch of those. It's going to be, those are going to be a lot of fun. Um, ha this one I figured out the hammer. I've been wanting one of these. I'm going to take this and I'm going to trim the back of this uh, hammer almost completely off. So it just has this little stub sticking off. And then I'm going to get a brass gear, the exact width of the trigger, and I'm going to slit it between the cogs. I might use, uh, I think it's called pinion extrusion. Uh, looks like a gear, but doesn't have a hole in it. Uh, either way, what this will wind up doing is it'll be sitting completely flush inside there with uh, like a brass gear sitting there to catch your, your finger on. It'll look awesome. Uh, and that's a pretty straightforward modification. Should be able to do that. Uh, as soon as I can find the gear. I don't actually know how to spec out gears, so I think it's seven millimeters wide and I'd like it to be about uh, eight tall. Maybe maybe wider. I have the, I have the dimensions written down here somewhere, but uh, definitely seven millimeter wide and then an assortment of, uh, you know, diameters to see which one looks the best. Um, yeah, I really can't thank you guys enough for sending those parts. There's some really, really high-end stuff came 
that uh, is going to be awesome to play with and modify and turn into something cool. Um, this one I'm still working on a design for. Um, I had this, this Warthog sitting here. I don't much like the giant uh, sights on it, but I'm either going to go bigger or get rid of them completely. Um, I think I'm going to turn this one into a steampunk gun too, just because I have it. Um, and it could be a, a contrast to the long barrel, long slide, heavy weight thing that I've been doing. Um, you know, maybe go with some sort of ridiculous beaver tail safety, you know, some sort of protrusion off the trigger guard for a second finger rest, some sort of protrusion off the frame. I mean, we get nuts with it. Um, but I'm throwing it into the mix because why not? Yeah. This is going to be fun. This one may wind up being a little more conventional in terms of, you know, off-the-shelf parts going onto it. Uh, a little less custom work just because, you know, the, the Para Warthog slide is already kind of ridiculous by itself. I'm definitely going to have a full-size single-stack magazine on this thing. Um, maybe even set up with a, uh, you know, 10 or 15 round mag sticking out of it. Um, I have some that I can rebuild or modify as is. I mean, just, just going to get ridiculous, but it's going to be short as opposed to the long look. Uh, continuing around the table. Um, yeah. Got uh, this mainspring housing. I need to get the little pins that go into them. Uh, I, miss, I think I'm missing the little pin that retains the plunger on all of these. Uh, just don't know. I thought I had those, but I don't, apparently. Most of the little internal pins still need a couple more. And then, of course, if we keep rotating around, we get to the, uh, the monster. This one, um, thank you for the viewer that sent this. This is a uh, early Colt wide spur hammer that I think I'm going to leave on. I'm totally unmolested on this gun. Uh, maybe do something different with these rear sights, steal those rear sights, put them on a different gun. I kind of like the, uh, I think it'll look interesting with a little bit more of a classic look or either something classic or something more radical. You know, maybe, maybe make some sort of a brass, you know, monolith sight up there. But, you know, these, these little parts really do help tracking down. It's, it's a real pain in the ass, you know to order these things one at a time off of, uh, you know, various online sites. So getting little sacks of them in the mail was, was pretty awesome. So I've got to say thank you to the guys that sent them. Um, unfortunately, I didn't make good enough notes as to who all sent what, so I can't thank you guys specifically. But, uh, yeah, things are coming. Things are working. Acquiring these little bits at a time. With a little luck, I should have the 80% frames here, uh, pretty short order. Uh, i got to modify a keyway cutter to cut the, to do the milling that's, not, that's required on them. And I'll probably make a uh, video showing the process for that, um, edit it together and, and stick it up when I do it. Um, you know, just, just so you guys can see how that's done. It's pretty straightforward, kind of boring, but... It's fun to watch for the first, you know, 30 seconds, and then you can go back on to other stuff. So, anyway, lots of guns coming together. Two more designs that got to get done. Um, looking for inspiration on that one over there. Um, this one, I think, is going to be radical beaver tail safety. Some sort of outrageous mainspring housing, if I can find one. I might have to make one. Uh, you know, take this uh, stainless one, maybe mill it flush and add some sort of a piece that comes out like that. You know, I mean, just something ridiculous, something something absurd. But I don't want it to impede function. It's got to work. If it doesn't work, it doesn't go on the gun. Yeah, well, a lot of work, a lot of little parts, tracking them down, and uh, we're getting there. Alright guys, I'm going to get back to work. Have a good one.